company. And I really enjoyed to see with you guys collaborating and getting your dreams um, in place and working into them. I really enjoyed that uh, point in Mexico said once. Um, youth, after a while, after 30 days, becomes just a contagious thing. So I love to be around young people. Um, what else? Well, um, I'm specializing pretty much in innovation, collaboration, and education. In collaboration, in the part of transdisciplinary collaboration, in innovation, I really enjoy social and cultural entrepreneurship and innovation in, in those fields. But I'm also very open to technology. I'm a really bad programmer, but I can program. And I really understand that like, some of my best friends are programmers. So um, I really enjoy uh, to develop technology and to get people, you know, to improve lives of people with technology. What else I want to say? Well, um, I'm also very open to new ideas. And I, I realize that I'm more like a project manager. <laughs> so I'm, I'm really uh, enjoying working with other people and getting projects done. I have a very crazy business plan ideas probably because I never went to business school. So if you have a crazy plan or you have a crazy uh, and, um, project, um, I think I can help you because I'm very used to those things. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to work with you and to help in any way I can. And I hope to um, I will visit you in Bolsano because I love, love, love Italian. Thank you so much. And see you later. Ciao, ciao. <coughs> Now that you got applause. <laughs> so you got the background of this mentor, right? He's actually he's going to graduate in music. He's going to get this doctor degree in music. So you see the entrepreneurship comes from every direction. It doesn't have to be uh, computer science, economics, so also other from other fields. Okay, so now we hand over to Hannah, oh, sorry, I open your. Here, 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 Okay, so uh, to start, animated kids always work very well to get your attention. <laughs> so what I'm asking is this um, 10 to 15 minutes of complete attention. Um, I'm trying to give you some insight on my personal experience. Um, I also ask you to put away all your, I don't know, iPads, iPods, I netbooks, notebooks, notebooks, uh, whatever, because it's a very good way to pretend to do something. I myself, I'm doing that, that uh, quite often, to so pretend to do something, playing around. And we live in a world where uh, focus and attention is has a very short uh, span. So I really ask you to focus and to try to concentrate the time. Uh, so first thing, uh, who are you? I always like it when I'm talking to someone, uh, knowing who I'm talking to. So, uh, my name is Hannes Fadello, I live in uh, Bolzano. I did my degree in Trento, uh, economics and master in net economy. Uh, I, um, at the time of university, it was like uh, 2006, I think, more or less, uh, we wanted to start a social network. Uh, it should, should have been actually a clone of Facebook. Uh, Facebook at that time was not yet in Italy. Can you believe it? <laughs> and um, we called it Time It. Um, we founded uh, our limited in, in, in the UK. We did everything and it went uh, really bad. <laughs> but we tried it. And uh, the funny thing about um, that story is that it was like around 2006, 2007. Uh, Facebook was not yet in Italy. And when we were talking to people uh, about doing a clone in, in Italy and then maybe going to send to Facebook and whatever, <laughs> Uh, people, the, the, the answer from everybody, uh, like um, professors at the university, and like everybody was, was saying, yeah, okay, Facebook, that's kind of nice, and it works in America, 
And so, but in Italy it will never work. Because you know, people in Italy, they like to uh, socialize, they like to go to take aperitivo, to drink the coffee, to have a big lunch together and so on. And it will never work in Italy. Fun fact, Italy is now the country worldwide with Facebook, um, in, who in, um, which in Facebook has the uh, largest uh, market penetration. So <laughs> that's about the price ticket. Then I went on to work in the university a little bit. Uh, I passed to uh, Hager Pau, Associazione Vergatori, um, to uh, kick off the um, local uh, support for hotels in uh, business consultants, but on e-marketing, because they, they didn't have anything about that. Then I went to Australia to, Mark, to, to do a road trip, came back, uh, became a financial advisor, uh, which I still uh, am for Fineco. In the meantime, I built two other companies, um, with whom we are on the one side uh, concentrating on um, developing, um, so it's about a mobile and web development, and on the other side in finding a, a project and uh, funding them or investing them or bring them bring them on. Just a quick overview. So what I'm telling you or trying to tell you today is basically this one. Um, I used to uh, some, sometimes colorful language to <laughs> make it a little shorter. Um, so it's get shit done. Uh, what is also like this course is about, I think. Uh, Michael Dell, who you probably know uh, from Dell Computers, uh, um, puts it in a, a little bit more nicer way. He says, ideas are commodities, implementing them is not. So this is a very basic lesson of Lean Startup and uh, get shit done. So it means that um, I'm not under-evaluating ideas. Ideas are very important. But you can make a business and, and you can get a living with a not so good idea, which is executed very well, but you won't ever get a business uh, with a very good idea, which is executed poorly. So that is very important. So uh, what I want to tell you today, there is a lot of stuff, there are lots of things, and you can ask me about that later on also personally, but I'm just telling you three things that are very important for my personal um, view. So, first, what do you think being a startup or an entrepreneur means? So, I have a sensation that um, to nowadays, uh, like for the last two years, we have a really, we have a, a little hype going on on startup and entrepreneurship, and it's it's going to be cool. You have, you know, you have all that Berlin, Berlin scene, and it's really cool to be a startup and to be an entrepreneur, or whatever. So what I feel when talking to people and, and the feedback I get is that most people have this in mind, being an entrepreneur, you know, being cool, <laughs> having a beer, yeah, it's all relaxed and it's all cool. But what I am telling you, what it really is like, is completely different. Because in reality, being an entrepreneur or um, a startup, it's really like this. <laughs> okay? So, <laughs> it's a really good metaphor, I think, because you know, you go out there and you think, yeah, everything is good, I'm going to do this stuff, and then bam, you get that. And I'm without getting out of it. Yeah, yeah, that's, 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 I mean, that's the, what, that's the 10% of startups that survive, that then get up and, yeah, I'm cool, but the other 90% will end up with a broken leg, arm, lips, I don't know, whatever. So, uh, what, I'm, what I'm telling you is that it's not cool to be a startup or an entrepreneur. I mean, it can be when you get up, but if you don't get up, it's not too good. Um, what, it, what it is all about is uh, probably you're studying economics, so you should know that the, the, the so called value of debt, you know, you start a business, you fund it, you have just expanded, uh, you expand it, you have, don't have any income and whatever, you don't break even, and then you're gone. Okay, classic theory. Um, this, this break even point could be everything. It's, I mean, it could be an economical break even point, it could be another important uh, key performance indicator. You're getting X uh, subscribed users, or I don't know, could be um, almost anything. Um, the problem is that you expect it. Yeah, I start here and the value of that, and then I reach this point, which is actually very good, and then it goes like, Shh. no, <laughs> it goes like this normally. So what happens is that you reach this peak, and then you are like, yeah, everything's going on, and then you have, I don't know, a server crash, a legal complaint, or just empty. So basically, you just dive down, no dive. <laughs> you go down again. You 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 find yourself again in this situation. So this would be. Uh, so this is true also 
uh, for your uh, personal life as an entrepreneur um, as for your business. Uh, being an entrepreneur or doing a startup means that you're always confronted with ups and downs. So you, you're in this situation and it goes up and everything is cool and yeah, 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 and then you go down again and then it goes up again. So basically what your life will be or could be is about look about like that. So you're doing something, then it's cool, then it's again fun. Then it's too cool, then it's again fun. So you really have to focus to find some balance in, in between it. Obviously, you can always choose to be like a state employee or whatever, and your lifeline looks like this. Depends. I mean, it's, it's, it's a choice. Um, you, also, you, you can come to this point at some point, at some point probably, but in the beginning, it will always be like this. So, um, when you have this situation, it is really important. When you see this, probably say, yeah, there's an up and a down, there's an up and a down. But this is not success. Uh, I mean, so far, if you compare it, you're always on the same level. But you had a lot of stress, you had a lot of risk, you had a lot of work, you had a lot of other things to do. And in every situation, here is always already a kind of good situation because you're going up, but you could always go down. So, um, what can you do to change that? So what does success mean? Success simply means shifting the direction. It means your life as a startup and entrepreneur will always have these ups and downs. It will always be a good situation, a bad situation, a good situation. But what, what is important is the direction of it. So you have like to improve and to get better and better and better, better step by step, uh, and which Lean Startup is, I, I think, also about to iterate, to do a lot of iterations, to do uh, like uh, single steps, small steps, you get better, 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 and then you can come from a flat situation with a lot of risk and a lot of work. You can try to go to a success situation with a lot of risk and a lot of work, but at least you have uh, the right direction. And in the end, maybe if you're reaching this, if you're like at this point, then probably it's going to be look like this. You all at least you will feel like this. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> so that's how you would be, how you, how you would feel from it if you if you are able to reach it. So the second lesson is be great. So this sounds pretty simple, but it's not. Uh, it's not it's not very simple because we um, actually live, uh, especially in Europe, in in a very constrained um, situation in society um, from. Small uh, pupils, we have like this situation where you have limits, uh, where people are telling you, you cannot do this, uh, you won't be able to do that, you are not allowed to walk on the grass and play football because the grass is too pretty, you, uh, this is not for you, get a normal job, don't do this, um, it's, it's not secure, and so on. So we have a very, very constrained uh, society which is basically telling you, you're not great, you're never be going to be great, so just leave it alone. Uh, what I'm telling you, you can be great, you should be great. There's nothing, really nothing um, limiting you uh, for being great or doing great stuff. Has anybody doubt about that? Everybody. Okay, <laughs> so now I'm telling you why you should be great and why there's no excuse for that. Okay, so probably most or some of you will know him, Alex Zanardi. was a great race driver had a terrible uh, crash, you see what happened. After the crash he survived, he's uh, racing again with pedals on the, on the car. Uh, he, he changed uh, to, uh, I don't know actually how you call it, uh, the race, the kind of race. Uh, he has now won several uh, Olympic medals after that. I mean, if you see this image, uh, for me it was like a, a key changer. What, what is holding you to be great, to be great stuff? I mean, you have this, compared to whatever other problem, I don't know. So, really, uh, the question is, key number of I mean, wh wh why are you, not, are you not doing this, this or complaining that? So basically what I'm telling you also is, please, um, don't waste my time, don't waste your time, don't waste their time, don't waste Becca's time or whatever, whoever time, uh, but basically don't waste your time, your, your really time, uh, if you have this kind of situation. I mean, uh, don't come to me or to, to have a complaining, yeah, I can't find five, ten thousand euros uh, for my startup because I need it to fund it all. 
I can't program, I need a dev developer, but I can't find it, or oh, I need a design, but I can't find a designer who is really good or whatever. I mean, guys, come on. Okay? So, the third and uh, last one, and for me the most important of all, is this one single word, uh, which is VGAE. And it's, for me personally, it's, it's the most single important uh, word in, in, in the world of an entrepreneur. So what does it mean? An idiot? Okay, so basically giga it means what is good but it. What is good but it. What is good but it. So you can keep that as a mantra, you can say it every day in the mirror <laughs> to yourself. Um, that's very, very important. Because in every, in every, every life situation, you will, if you keep this approach, you will get out of it something, even if, if it's a crap situation, even if it's the worst situation ever imaginable. So it's approach. Um, so what does, what is good about it mean, really? It's success. Because you have this value of that in an infinite loop. But what really makes a change is at this point, you need to apply this. You need to say, what is good about it? What is good about it? What is good about it? What can I learn from it? What can I improve it? How can I improve it? How can I shift it that the next time I will be here, the next time I will be here? So uh, basically, example, server crashes and whatever, and everything goes down. What can I learn about it? Maybe I learn some stuff that it won't ever happen again. Or you can make every, just every example you, you, you want. The important thing is that you, uh, this, this helps you to don't, um, Make or commit the same error again, 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 again. And how, how, so how do you uh, put, this, put that in practice? It's a simple concept that, that we use, and it's invent, develop, deliver, and we iterate on this step. So it's, I think it's also in the Lean Startup uh, logic. Um, so what we do is we invent, I say, okay, we think about, we have ideas, whatever, develop, execution, we make it. But you have to make it to the end, and then deliver is the most important part. Well, where um, most uh, little startups uh, fail, or we uh, ourselves uh, fail on this part. So you are on the invention and developing, invention, developing, invention, developing, yeah, 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 but you never deliver. So this is all, I think Lean Startup is all about this. So you have to deliver. In small steps, in big steps, but you have to deliver. You have to close uh, uh, something and to test it, prove it, and then you go on again in the cycle. So, uh, I'm nearly finished, and it's time, which is good. Um, what you can expect from me, which is, I think, the most important part, you can obviously ask me everything, you can contact me directly, I will help you on whatever topics you want, and I'm able to, if I'm not able to, I will address it to someone else, who could maybe help you on it, but please, expect help, no cuddling. Mm -hmm. So, don't expect, yeah, you're good, yeah. no, <laughs> expect fair answers, fair help, but don't expect me to be like uh, positive on everything you do. If it's shit, I will tell you. <laughs> okay, so basically I'm finished. This is my finishing slide. Uh, this is my email, and you can contact me whenever you want. Anybody wants to ask questions now? <coughs> or <any> burning questions? <coughs> or you call it for. Okay. I did just find the animated chip. Okay, before you come home with you, I just show the mentors also. I, one thing I forgot to show is <coughs> our students. I take to see the background. So probably we, we do have a complete list of all the students here. And you can see from the faculty, it's actually from computer science, economics, and design and art. And we have also students from outside Italy. So these are the students you are going to mentor in the next weeks. Okay, so i now hand over to Boris. And we need this one, yeah? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, probably the other presentation. Cool. <laughs> <laughs>
This is my presentation. <laughs> just, okay, my email, my contact, this is my contact. And just a few things that I show you. And uh, so, uh, yes, what's the start of that was? He preceded me. And then you comment. Sorry. <laughs> I have to invent something else there and talk about something else. But it's really what is the start of it? Everybody's talking about startup and uh, you open a shop. You open a club shop and you say this is a startup. It could be. I mean, it's just a definition, and I do not care about this definition. <clears throat> the other thing is why. The other thing is why you are here. You. Why are you here? I think that uh, it could be useful for the future. <coughs> I have to acquire some tasks that yeah that could be useful for me. And have already your startup in mind. Uh, not actually. Some ideas, maybe. Okay. Well, Something's not well defined, but it's me. Okay. <coughs> so down here, you. <coughs> me. Yeah. Yes, I want to. <coughs> have your idea? Yes, I have idea. Yes. What do you do here? I'm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not you sure. You work on your idea. Yes, I'm working on it. Oh, you go work on your idea now. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to. You're wasting your time here. <laughs> if you think if you think I'm gonna give you a <coughs> word of wisdom out of the rock. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean what's important is uh, uh the important things I want to be able to tell them to you. The important things it's uh, if it's important it must be important to you. What is important to me is it's important to me. So it's basically don't listen to others much too much. I mean, okay, they've come here, probably they thought you have to be here, but actually, mm, I don't know how much you will learn. Anyway, I started uh, with a friend of mine in 1999, Acre, which is not old cost of us. <laughs> the initial of the two founders. Initial founders. And uh, we made uh, Acre with still is, uh, still exists. You can see from my email, the website is down, so don't bother about going into it. You know? And it's a concepting company. What means concepting? Uh, we have ideas, which we try to have them work. Okay? All right, thank you. And uh, in 2006, uh, we made uh, a lot of consultancies uh, for uh, this multinational and in the, in the IT department and marketing and the IT. Then in 2006, we started. Uh, yeah, come on, scroll up. Well, let's, I'm not sure this is my problem now. <laughs> but anyway, okay. And I call it just a cooperative that is uh, it's working with teachers and students and it's business here in Bolzano. And it uh, makes it easier for, makes formation for, uh, for teachers. Then in 2008, we made Abaco Calculatore. Abaco Calculatore is a company that is uh, selling and making computers for students, kids and uh, teachers, mostly laptops. Then in 2008, uh, uh, again, uh, I took an old bug of mine, which is uh, sound reproduction. And Futa is uh, a company that uh, makes uh, audio amplifiers. I'm an electronic engineer. And so from 1999 until 2008, I put all the engineering aside. And uh, I work with uh, formation uh, schools uh, teachers. This is to say that uh, do everything. Try to do a little bit of everything. You can specialize, which is cool. But don't think that if you're do if you're not exactly doing uh, uh, something that you have really in mind, uh, uh, doing everything. Uh, even the most disparate things from what you're doing here, from what you're studying here, it helps. It helps try to do a nice job. 
uh, I used to clean offices when I was uh, in my high in, when I was in high school and go abroad, study abroad, work abroad, come back, whatever. Broaden your mind. This is some stuff helps you broaden your mind, and this is what also uh, helps him uh, do shit, do stuff. Don't just have it in your mind and then okay. Probably tomorrow I will do it. Uh, okay, next month. Okay. Next month we probably do that. I can. Okay. Uh, you don't really. You really don't know what you'll be doing in a, in a month, in a week, tomorrow. Uh, no. So if you have your idea, just pursue it and go straight for it. You can also realize that you're probably uh, in the wrong faculty. That's not the problem. I mean, uh, we make, everybody makes mistakes, and mistakes, is good. mistakes are good, and I think Hannes can. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you won't learn anything if you don't make any mistakes. This is plain fact. Evolution is based on mistakes. So if you want to go further, if you want to go into this <laughs> same as all sorts of the passwords that can be probably cyber success, and uh, you have to make a lot of mistakes. And uh, on the fact, on the the matter of success, for me, success is a uh, personal thing. You define it as the other things. Don't let anybody else tell you this is a successful or not. I mean, uh, I'm not going around in a Porsche. I'm not, uh, I do not live in a castle. I do not live in Palo Alto or whatever. Am I successful? Sort of. Could be better. Okay. But I can also think that my company has, so next year will be 15 years. And I can also say this is a sort of success. The other thing that I like, for example, Suture are making enterprises is successful. We made a lot of firms. I said it worldwide, not in the numbers that I would like. But for me, it's a sort of success. Having, I like to maybe just show you. No. no. Anyway. Yes, you should connect to the man. Maybe you your Oh, well, it used to work. Just yeah. in, that, in that room, it used to work. You want to use this one to show? So okay. Yeah, I'm over with it. So. Yeah.
into making a startup or making your own business. And uh, we won't make the business for you, but we can make and give you probably some suggestions. That, as I said before, you can take or not. Better not. So, questions, anybody? With pleasure. Yes, both of them will take questions. Either to Boris or to Hannah. Yeah, <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, it's such a small room. You can want to the table. Okay. Can I? Yes. Okay. No. First question. I offer coffee for <laughs> the guy or girl. Uh, that's the first question. Don't be shy. I mean, come on, come on. Uh, do you think you're about to be an entrepreneur? Because it's all you wanted at that time was to come up. You had the idea, you work on it, and it just went as you wish for. Because sometimes, as you said before, why are we here? Maybe you we do not promise that it was a talent. I wanted to see. Uh, I would like to do things, but actually, I don't have an idea. So I would take well, all the means near and then when I finish my master see what I can do it's more like that but I don't have an idea. I don't know if I could be an entrepreneur and I know people that say yeah I would work with entrepreneurs could be. I mean it depends. I, mean, I was not born to be an entrepreneur. I don't think so. It just came up and uh Really, I mean, you probably you don't feel an entrepreneur now. It doesn't mean that in a few years, next year, it, this will change. I mean, as I said, do stuff. Go in a company, go abroad, study, whatever, work, work, a lot of work, and probably you will see. You like to do stuff, okay? You probably find also other people that have the idea. That, for example, he can. Me and Alessandro, he's sort of, he has the ideas, and then I like them to turn them into reality. So if you don't have the ideas, that's not a problem. Uh, sorry, what was your name? What? Your name? Selena. Selena. Um, personally, I think it's a very broad question because there are, uh, I think, I don't know, millions of theoretical studies about entrepreneurship and yeah. what conditions are bringing to it and all this. Uh, for me, there's a lot of it. There's the ecosystem, the, the thing I said, I told you. So it's like about constraints. You're not allowed to. You can't. You don't be great. Blah, blah, blah. Then there's maybe family. If you're coming from an entrepreneurship family, then mostly or more often you're more inspired to to get um, active as well. You just end up in drugs. Yeah, or you just end up in drugs. I mean, it's both ways. No, it, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a, a, but it, it's not a it's a theoretical thing. So we don't give. You, uh, you know nothing me, about you know me, Red Nivar, the company of uh, television. Yes. And uh, this is interesting because it's, I mean, the guy that made Nivar, probably some of your parents had one of uh, their televisions at home. Definitely, I bet it. And uh, uh, he's 90. He's still the owner of the company. The company will close in, in November after 50 years. Because? Because his son was, uh, had drug issues and whatever, and yeah, I mean, it's not didn't have any other person to pass yeah. on the, the legacy. Sorry. Yeah. So basically, the same uh, thing uh, both said is, uh, you, you were saying you want to do stuff, but you have no idea. So no idea, no, it's not a problem. As I said before, ideas are important, but you will find them. There are ways to find them. It's more important to get stuff done. So my question is, why do you want to get stuff? Why do you want to do stuff? That's more important. Yeah, I mean, I don't like this last line. Okay, so that's a good point to start. So where you can start, you say, okay, I have some ideas, but what you can do is the question: what, what are you good at? Like, what do you do in your free time? Or what do you really excel? Organizing. 
Yeah, okay, so that's, that's, nice. yeah. That's, so that's a mean, starting point. <clears throat> so that's a starting point. Then maybe you try to focus that on something more specific, on a niche. Yep. Organizing, I mean, it's huge, organizing is everything, but maybe you can uh, focus on, on something smaller, like organizing that and that, or I don't know. And then just offer it to somebody, do it for free. Build a Facebook page, group, whatever, find 500 people to yep. like you, and then do it. Try it, you don't need, even need a business. But then maybe you get the, the, the taste <laughs> of being an entrepreneur, of doing something, and then you see, okay, I like it, or then don't like it, and then you can go on, and then it will build automatically if you have... For me, being an entrepreneur has to do with something with an intern impulse or something that drives yes. you. You have to be driven. But you can't build that on purpose. I think it's just something that's It's necessary. Sometimes it's <clears throat> not sufficient, but if you don't have that, probably you just probably do <clears throat> other things. If you want to organize, that's cool because you have, you don't know how many startups just fought because everybody is organizing yeah. it. The guys who have the idea. The coolest <laughs> ideas in the world. Yeah, we have to make them a world. <laughs> so, yeah. so that's my advice. Think about what you're good at, then find a, clo find a very niche yep. something, and then just do it. For friends or family or whoever, or ask someone who wants, who you could have, do it also for free. If you get some money, you invest it. But you don't need, I mean, if you ask like 50 or 100 years, you don't need to build a company for that. Thinking something to create a better dynamic in mm -hmm. room uh, because they know you now, but you don't know them. So why why, why not to present? Uh, I mean, maybe all of you can say your name and why you are here and yeah. the value yeah. you belong. And maybe from here we can start to bring more more questions. No, I don't know. What, what do you think? Would you like to present yourself? Yeah, well, we can just do. Who has an idea? Also. Yeah. <laughs> so what? Well, okay, I'll we'll just here, there is over there. Yes. So who, okay, so I have four people having an idea. And uh, who wants to do something? <laughs> so we have well, well, more people. Okay. Yeah, that's not really good. Who wants to do something? <laughs> I mean, if you don't want to do something, it's not a problem. Don't be shy. We're not giving any grade. So it's everything. But I think everything is recorded. So anyway, yes. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And also, the the world is first challenge that we de they developed last week. They were ideas there. Okay. Also, they were really ideas there. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, I'm thinking that to to we we continue with some general questions and then you have what we can do is in this way. First of all, we show the videos they made in the last two yeah, weeks. And then, would you like to hear what the mentors say about your ideas? Yeah. No? Yeah. And then, we can start to yeah. get the feedback and we can also yeah. visit each other how to make that video. Yes, yeah. we can yeah. also do like a uh, short, uh, you know, hard bake session. Where you have like to, we can also do that if you want. So, um, someone uh, tell me an announce an, an, uh, something which, which comes up to your mind. I mean, something I don't catch up or whatever. Network. Network. Okay, tell me something else. Company. Okay, so it's like it's kind of boring, but okay. So we would have like the the the, the goal is networkcompany.com. And now you have to make a pitch of what you're offering, who is your customer, what you're doing. Yeah. So we're doing that again, but not with those two basics. Uh, so give me something. No <coughs> business. Cloud. 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 Service cloud company. So what are you offering and to who? Network service company. Cloud yeah. company. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, you vary on. I think you should get a little bit more relaxed and more specific. Just yeah. think, what are you doing with your free time? Football, okay, football. What are you doing in your free time? Swimming. Swimming. Okay, so it's footballswimming.com. What are you offering and who are your customers? Students who want to do sports, maybe. Sports, more specific, okay. probably. Mm -hmm. Like you're selling footballswimming.com to me. Why should I use it? To get the best equipment for football and swimming. Yeah, could be. That could be uh, uh, already in the direction of the business model, but you have to think a little bit deeper. So, first of all, where um, where and who are your customers? 
you like you have football swimming, then you would probably have like an intersection of both, maybe. Mm -hmm. Or maybe the opposite. You have you have like people who really like football but hate swimming, or the opposite. Or you have have people enjoying both together. So that's the basic. And let's do another round. So what's your now? Your free time? What do you do? Or everything that comes to your mind? Free climbing. Free climbing. Okay, yours. I'm fighting. I need sports. Fighting. Fighting. So it's free climbing. Fighting. <laughs> com. Okay. That could be nice. <laughs> so, but I think it's just it's just to getting a little bit more more relaxed about things and and and, and have the concept that uh, this is the whole concept that ideas are okay, but you have to develop them. You have to do uh, some stuff and you have to get it done. So that's uh, that's the basic basic uh, approach, I guess. You should have to if you have like questions, just even the most stupid idea or silly idea comes to your mind. That's okay. I mean, there are people selling uh, socks online, so you get your socks every week. Or I mean, yeah, yeah, a lot of. It's not a problem. Many of us, or at least me, uh, we are here maybe to to learn a little bit how we can approach that good way to start from an idea and. To diminish maybe the failure rate. So if you yeah, don't good. know how you develop an idea. Do you already have an idea? I have one. Okay, what yeah. is your idea? Okay, I worked uh, at the Association of Artisans here in Bolzano and they need a selling platform for uh, craft products. And I know that they want to develop it in future, but maybe I could be integrated. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. I could develop it together with them. Yeah, that's a good starting point. I mean, that's uh, a good idea. So what? I'm a steer and I don't know who to approach and how something could be done. But I already we already thought about the minimum. Right. Yes. Yeah. So that I didn't know first, but now I know it, and I know I already better how to mm -hmm. approach it. So what is your problem? What is your question? Well, so where can we head? Yeah. You want like? <laughs> good question. <laughs> Okay. It's, um, Again, think about for the next yeah. minutes while you're here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Would you ask you something else? Um, at the beginning of the course, with the, if you want to learn how to make humans, you will learn how to say good. Okay. What, what, what do you like good babies? What does it mean to you? Sorry. Uh, at the beginning of the course, there was said, you want to learn how to make millions, you will, you will learn how to say good. What in UI, your opinion, good babies? Well, I'm still walking. <laughs> good failure for me is basically what I told you in the in the, in the presentation. It's the guy coming down the stairs and saying and walking away. So that's that's what a good failure. And uh, the the other bad failure you can have is the, what is good about it. So that's the concept that 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 you're the the, the very fast and very quick iteration of a product of an idea of a development are constant failures. Because there is no <laughs> rocket that is going up. You 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 are testing things that will have at least 50 50 failures. I mean, so um, what you can get out of it is the concept of uh, what is good about it. So every failure, you can learn something from the failure. Um, so uh, maybe I can tell you a more uh, practical example from from my personal situation. So when I told you we have been developing those this social network during your university called Time It. Um, we did, it, it was a failure, but uh, I did learn a lot about it. I mean, I created a company in England, in the UK, uh, and uh, I learned that we paid really too much for service. We paid like 350 euros a, a month for service, <laughs> which were at 0.1% of, of, uh, of, how you call it, um, usage. <laughs> so, um, I also learned that, that you know, sometimes it's okay to take advice and to have advice, but you have to work it on your own because, maybe, as, I, as I told you, it was like around 2006 and everybody was saying, yeah, social networking in Italy will never work online. And um, so that stuff I learned from it. Then afterwards, in 2008, 2009, 2009 um, we won Working Capital Telecom Italia, which is a big an international, an Italian uh, prize competition. We, in the, the first year, we won it. We got some. We got some funding. We had an idea we wanted to develop, and we spent I don't know, ten months developing it. And if this was the whole idea, 
I think we developed like this in 10 months. So <laughs> we really came to a point that, okay, it's huge, huge. It's epic, not to, but epic fail. <laughs> yeah, epic, epic fail. I mean, we, we, we have we haven't really done anything about this. So what we what we did is we t took out this little part and made it a standalone stuff thing, and that worked out. It was okay. So um, so that's why why failure is uh, very important. And and, and the, the other thing about failure is that you can just get it on your own. Nobody else will fail for you. Yeah, that, that's a re really uh, important concept because uh, you can learn a, um, a lot. You can get shortcuts, you know, and that's also very important. It's about acceleration and not doing stupid stuff, you useless stuff that, that you can learn from somebody else or you can get quicker to it. But some uh, some things you will have to do them on your own and you will get you will have to do a note dive on your own and getting and then getting up again. And I think to the point what we do you remember this concept if you were stewarding. So yes. after you fail you have to make this decision every time. Are you going to change the direction? You want how you persevere. You 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 think that still you don't fail how hardly you have to insist at this point. Yeah. And what can I just describe there? Single out one feature from the whole idea. Just so called zoom in pivoting. So actually one single feature becomes the whole product. Sometimes this kind of decision also needed. Yeah, or oh, another example, uh, like from this uh, what is good about it approach, uh, we had, um, like in, in the very beginning of the company, we had a big contract, a big customer, uh, big money for a little company, it's about like 40, 50,000 euros, it's a, it's a huge amount for a little company, <laughs> for a startup company, and they were kind of not paying, and uh, then we kept on going on, and okay, 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 in the end, we didn't, they, they didn't pay, then we had to, to go to, to lawyers and whatever, and it took like a year or one and a half years, and now we settled, and now we have everything clear, and they're paying, okay. But it could really have ruined the whole startup, because I mean, 50,000 years is quite a lot of money in, in the beginning. Uh, so what we learned about it, or what I learned about it, is okay, you have to write proper uh, <laughs> um, contract, <laughs> because we didn't have one. So I learned, we, we had kind of one, but it was not really uh, enforceable. So that I learned about it, and I also learned about it that maybe we should uh, diversify a little bit more. So we didn't have one big client, big customer, so we need, needed a broader basis. So that's what you, where you basically fail, but then you learn from it, and then you get better and better. Do you think that everybody has to? Uh, I mean, uh, in theory, we could have learned and make good contracts. It's like when you when you hire a carpenter uh, to make something for you in the house. The only thing we know, we have to make a contract. The only thing that everybody tells us is that since we hire the carpenter and they say, lovely, I do everything, very cheap. Yeah. You're, you're, everybody's just so happy that they come here to do the thing. And then he rules the house and then he leaves. And, uh, very cheaply. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, why is it so hard for us? I mean, you just evidence the case that, I mean, you with all the learning that is not taken place, uh, we still do make those mistakes. So where do you think that comes from? You have to always personally learn so that, or, or do something in order to uh, internalize these uh, things. I, I personally had a mind shift like when I was 25. I thought, okay, personal experience is okay, but you can learn basically most, almost everything from yeah. other, other guys, from other people, etc. Now, it's kind of different. I think, okay, you can learn a lot from other guys, you can learn a lot from other people, but personal experience is very important. So, for me, it, it, it changed uh, a little bit the perspective. But still, if you find the right people, if you find the right help, you can really be a lot quicker, a lot shorter on, on the intervals. So, it's not about, you won't ever have like the, the line going up like this, you know. You will always have one uh, set, but maybe it's getting shorter, it's getting closer. So you're getting shorter intervals, or, or, or you have the, the shift to the success route quicker. So that's what what what, what could, could uh, help uh, if I could have like uh, that kind of support years ago. Then maybe I wouldn't have done that. I would have done other errors or bigger errors maybe, but I wouldn't have done that one probably. In the end, it's just as uh, he said also before, just do stuff. I mean, uh, uh, you don't like coding, start coding. You, want, you have to make a website, just learn the basics of it. 
you have something that that, that is uh, doing with manufacture, start to learn this manufacturing, even if it's carpentry, if it's uh, woodwork, whatever, just the basics of it. So if the carpenter can, comes to your house, at least you can say, well, no, you're not doing it right. And that's the same when you, when you make a company. You have to learn a, a little bit about finance, about uh, coding again, uh, you're the computer side of it, manufacturer, marketing, sales, uh, and accountability. I mean, uh, I hate it, but I fucking hate it, but I can't. Oh, that works. Works. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> Everything is recorded, I guess. So. <laughs> I mean, can you read? yeah, <laughs> you, you can edit it out. Okay, okay so but it, it's stuff that, uh, that is very important if you want to have a grasp on things, and uh, especially the economics of it, get the figures straight. I mean, this, that I should have thought about it more often, then, but it's something that still goes, goes beyond me. So it's the, the, the thing that I'm really weak is that about uh, the, the numbers, money, and... Uh, but I absolutely think that it's foremost to learn a little bit of everything. I think so just for a good fail, because a good fail for me is when you are failing with the less effort possible. So that's a good fail. If you are failing with a lot of effort, then it's a bad fail, normally. So... Um, because you feel drained, and in the end, yeah. when it, you have so much invested into something, it goes to hell. Then you just think, no, I don't want to do this anymore, and it's it's about sunk cost. So yeah. But it's but difficult. it's difficult because uh, it it implies on the product, yeah, but it, yeah, it implies uh, a level of detachment which is not easy. It depends on what yeah. you're doing. Yeah. For example, yeah. I have some things done that are very attached to them, and seeing not them properly going, it's Painful, but a real entrepreneur should learn also to have sort of detachment to things that he's doing and said, okay, either it goes very well, and so he decides to leave it to others, and if it goes bad, he said, well, okay, I tried it to be that fail, fail better next time. <laughs> So I have a question. Just now you said so you have to learn a little bit doing everything. Yeah. But how about this teamwork then? Because I hear that you find teammates that can do the things you cannot do. So how do you balance it that one person can do a little bit everything and it's good. I mean in, in a team it's good it's good to have a great team that has uh, People are mostly specialized in what they're doing. It's okay. But I think that if you want to work better with them, I think you have must have a, a grasp of what they are doing. You know, otherwise, uh, uh, even uh, even your teammates uh, probably uh, at some point or other do not understand something from their field of work. Probably as someone who is external can see it. So. Uh, I think this is important to have another point of view on what people are doing, and even if you are not an expert in their field, you can have the input, which can be crucial sometimes. Mm -hmm. no, often comes to my mind that we often uh, think that when we build a team, we have here uh, somebody who thinks about the business, another guy thinks yeah. about the marketing. You do the software, he does the design, and uh, everything comes together. And at the end of the day, uh, that doesn't typically happen like that. I think it works. If, if, if it would work, then we would have every success ever reached for that. But that's why we, we, how we build this. We get the, the talent there. Yeah, I mean, this works. This very specialized things works when the when the company is huge, and you have to do this. But if you are you're making your lean startup, it doesn't work like that. It doesn't work because you have to share ideas and you have to share the things that you do and your knowledge mostly. And you can't work blindsided. Okay, I'm doing the marketing. Okay, the other guy is doing the the website and whatever. And I mean, you won't do it. You won't uh, do anything with that. I think I can give you a very good example. Uh, during the start of weekend uh, one month ago, when we when what? Um, we had one team and they wanted to uh, prove their concept and idea and they were developing a questionnaire. So basic questions, whatever. 
we had like 45, 50 people participating in Startup Weekend, so it's not a huge thing. And they they thought, yeah, they will make it online and then we, they will give the questionnaire to everybody. So when I came to them, they like one, the only <laughs> um, coder developer from the team was like already developing three hours, I guess, on the, on the, on the, or three, four hours maybe on the questionnaire part developing it, uh, setting up the server, uh, everything, and it was still buggy. And so I went to him and said, why, uh, I mean, I don't get it, why, <laughs> why are you wasting like three or four hours doing this? Just get a sheet, write the, write the questions down, go to 50 people and ask them and note, note them to you, and then maybe do it, put them in an Excel file and you have your answers. First approach. Second approach, you want to do it online, it's okay, go to Google Drive, open it. Google Drive has a Google Forms, Create a, create a Google form and it takes like 20 minutes and you know it will work. And, and so uh, that, that's, that's why that's a perfect example. You, you have to know, you, we, you need someone in the team also that knows about like programming or doing a basic question in Google Drive, Google Docs, but it's not a, a, a developer. So you can, because developers often like to do this stuff just for doing it. <laughs> and then, yeah, that's true. I mean, that's true, but that's normal and also economics. Uh, or marketing, or all they have their flaws. But um, so what's important is that you like see the different bits and pieces, and then you can cut. But you know what? what uh, because I was the jury at this uh, weekend, uh, we, we met there, and uh, one thing that, uh, and it comes from what you're saying, is that uh, you have also sometimes to learn to be modest. Meaning that of all the ideas that we got into the startup weekend. Almost all of them were already have been done. I mean, nobody took the time to have Google to Google it to see if it didn't already exist. Okay, it's just because uh, uh, no, I made this one, but it's not really. It's really different because instead of uh, turning clockwise, you close it by turning it anti-clockwise. Okay, so, I mean, basically that's it. Or it was really has already been done, but nobody really took the one hour, two hours to search it if it was already been uh, there. So even take your time. Are you, you think saying that we cannot develop an idea that exists if you find? Uh, no, no, no. It's not. It's not that. But uh, think. I mean, those guys were investing really so much into something that turned out to be already there. You know. I mean, most of the projects, I mean, if you, if you remember, so I, think, them really, I, I, mean, I think this is a, a, like a, um, a difficult point to, to address because yeah. on, on one side, um, you won't have an idea that isn't developed around the world. It's basically impossible, probably. Uh, and there's also saying that if you are having an idea and not at least five, six other people around the world are working on it, then probably it's crap. So that's uh, just to give you an idea about that. Um, and I personally, I believe that in the moment where we work on process ideas and on, on pro, more on process ideas than on product ideas. So we focus on the process of our, of our thing. And uh, on the other hand, um, if you take like also the most successful uh, stories from from the last ten years, you, know, you take Google, you take um, Facebook itself. I mean, Facebook is not a pure social network. Zolando, the uh, written by shoes. Yeah, Zolando, yes, Zolando. Yeah, he, yeah. He's, he's from South Tyrol. Zolando, no. No, Zolando. The guy who's entrepreneur behind it. Mm, no, there should be the Zolando. I guess. Right. But it's okay. But basically, if you have like Facebook, it's not the first social network. I mean, the, you, you maybe remember the hype about MySpace. So, uh, Google. Before Google had other business, other business was the only thing around it. I mean, so um, it, it's not that if you have an idea and the idea is already there, you can't do it. But you have to do it better, what he's telling. So to do it better, you first have to know what the others are doing. And that's also a very good point to get things quicker. Because if you like, have an idea, I want to do, um, um, uh, what, what if we have climbing, fighting, <laughs> extreme climbing, fighting. Um, First of all, I, I go to, to, to see if there's something around, if there are ideas around, if I can work around them, if I can do them better, straighter. But I already have something to work on. And I don't lose like two days working on something. You say, yeah, okay, it's already there. And you do it exactly the same way. 
Okay, that's kind of stupid. <laughs> you know, maybe not the exact way, but at least it has to be something more. Besides, yeah, or better. Be an, an or you go back. <laughs> but yeah, but it must be an improvement. And yes. uh, must realize that. Yes. We didn't. I didn't saw that. Uh, yeah. Yes. And exactly, they were wasting a lot of time into useless things. That it was, there was no point to it. I mean, a question you can't waste your time. You know, Goddamn questioner. <laughs> you just go for the copy, uh, 10 sheets of that, and you give it to people. I mean, that's it. Or you do it hot potatoes uh, for schools and uh, Google. Question. I mean, come on. It's just losing sight of what you should be really doing and wasting time on to I, I think this is the most, most difficult part to uh, which you could learn, but it's also the most difficult part to, to bring over. I don't know. That's, that's the most... Because on, the, on one hand you have to fail on yourself, so that means you have to do stuff on yourself. You don't maybe sometimes you don't have to accept also uh, ideas from others or suggestions from others because you have to do it on, the, on yourself. But on the other side, by doing that you can get really quick. You can get get up to speed, you know. And that's that's maybe uh, important. If someone is telling me, yeah, okay, you're doing this, it takes you ten hours. I'm giving you this, the, the the idea, the suggestion to do it in one hour. And you can say, yeah, no, that's crap. I'm doing it in the my way. I'm failing, and then I'm doing it better. But you can also think, okay, one hour, I can try it. I do it. If I still don't believe it or it's not going out, well, okay, I have spent one hour. Can still do the long process and taking ten hours. So then it's all about speed, execution, time, shortening things up. So what is worrying you guys the most now? The course has started. It's three weeks into the course. What's not worrying? You are listening to these guys. They tell you smart ways how to fail. <laughs> how to learn from it. Which is evident, uh, the, the main message learning from anything you do. What is now uh, in your mind? I, I have a question for President It's kind of an uh, answer for your question. It's basically, for instance, before we won't receive any betting from you and you will tell us if our deal is bad. And I personally want to know how do you tell if an idea is good? Okay. No, but yeah, I, I mean, I'm not the guy telling you. I, I, I will tell you, yeah, good idea, bad idea. But in the end, uh, and the, the, the output will show if it's good or it's bad. So the execution will show if it's good. As, as I said before, you, I mean, you can uh, you listen to us. We can give you some advice, but you probably better not listen to us. <laughs> I mean, no jokes, uh, jokes aside. Uh, there is no there is no formula. I mean, for us, I think it's more once you do the things, it's a gut feeling. Yeah. Just feel. I mean, well, this could be interesting. Whatever. I mean, it's not. Uh, and this only comes out by doing stuff. Yeah. Doing a lot of stuff <laughs> over and over and failing, making things right, making things But bad. I think you can have some parameters where you can judge, okay, an idea is going sure. in the right direction and the wrong direction. So about business modeling, about execution, yeah. about team, about whatever, there, then you can get an idea. There are several but parameters that can be objectively like the, the the idea with the photos from the Alpini, I would have said, yeah, okay, that's a good idea. <laughs> that I mean, there's a lot of people that are okay to do it, but then it went out crap. So <laughs> yeah, that, that's <laughs> the way. It goes. I mean, I mean, I that's the, the way it goes. So, so even if you think it, it's a good idea, then maybe it can 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 go wrong, and even if you think it's a, it's it's not so good idea, it can go pretty well. Uh, or because what happens is that maybe you start with an idea. But then it evolves so quickly. So you you fail and you do a pivot and you do completely something else. But you you wouldn't have been able to do that something else if you wouldn't have failed. So you it's it's not like Facebook started with hot or not, basically. So what, what Facebook is now and what it used to be the idea, I mean, come on, it's completely something different. Yeah. All right, so the answer that I would have to your question is that you have data. Do you have any data to prove that your idea is well, what is the validity of your? But you say I love my idea. That's good, and you should love your idea. But if you don't love your idea, then I would say it's difficult to sell it. But then the next question is that uh, uh, the, that idea applied, and that's what you're testing. So 
So if everybody else has the idea, but the idea flies, then everybody else is wrong. <laughs> so the, the delivery phase is the important thing. Yes. To say that it's a good idea or not. Because when you got the feedback from the, the customer, then you know, your idea can, can be sold or not. Yeah, and, and the challenge is that your idea is very valuable. That, uh, uh, for example, the, the, this, uh, what is this bike that everybody uses an example? That you lean on? Ah, the Segway. Segway, yeah. I mean, uh, in order to test that, to ask people, would you like to, you know, fly around? If I would say love it, you know, love to fly around. Feeling like flying, but at the end of the day, it's not selling. It's too expensive. But it's a lovely idea. And you cannot get that by asking fast customers. They will not be, they don't have the, you know, we are moving by um, uh, feet, car, bicycle, motorcycle, whatever. But that was a novel concept. And it made any whole idea. So maybe it's not about asking the right question. So knowing. What questions you ask? Because you can, like, often you have, uh, the, the mistake I have been doing often is that you have an idea, and the idea is obviously cool, because it's yours. You love it, and you like it, and whatever. And then you're going to um, test it with customers, with, with, with friends, with whoever. But what you basically do is you convince them. But it is. Because you love it, it has to be right, and then you get a lot of false positive feedback. And that's, that's also uh, a yeah. very dangerous thing, because you are obviously convinced about it, but you have to get the most mutual feedback you can, obviously, because if I'm telling some my, my best friend about don't, this don't, idea... Don't ask your mother if yeah. your idea is good. They, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. they, they will, they should tell you, yeah, it's cool, okay, it's nice. I mean, worst thing is that, yeah, okay, it's, it's nice, I kind of like it. Today. Your friends or your parents are the worst kind of person to have your idea, opinions about your idea. If they hate your idea, they do seriously consider it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can add something about the... Anyway, probably uh, it depends on, on how you introduce it to the market, because probably you're not going to buy it for yourself, well, it's kind of expensive. If you're going to sell it as a service, like in Berlin, that they are renting these these things and you can have these like things mm -hmm. using them. Probably if you offer it as a service like a, a franchise where you rent these and people can use them in this way. Not for personal use for having a relay, but this in this way I think could I mean yeah, could be more of a yeah. 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 I think a good example case study is also VMware, I don't know, virtualization machines or whatever. There pretty huge now as a company. And they, um, in the beginning, they had a really cool idea, really cool product, really nice. And they went to to all the, like, the big companies uh, selling their software, the virtualization software, and for being really innovative, really cool, you can do a lot of stuff and blah, 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 blah. Nobody bought. Nobody. Really, literally nobody. Uh, and when they shifted to success was when they changed their approach and they were not selling it as as, as the service itself, but they were selling it with um, how much can you um, uh, can you um, pay less for using energy because you need like one tenth of the servers. So if they went to the big company that told them, okay, you have like you're spending like 10 million or 50 million a year for servers, <laughs> and you can install this stuff and you will spend like two million. Give me five of the other million, or I don't know, something like that. And that, that was what changed the, the way. So um, this is what execution is about, and where I think you can get uh, help, external help from mentors, from every, from some outside people. Uh, when you're kind of stuck on on, on that, and may, maybe the idea is good, maybe the market theoretically should be good, but it's not working out. Then you can get some really good feedback on turning a product that was already existing into a story of success. Does anybody know what is Listerine? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, mouthwash. Do you know what it used to be before? Car wash, something. Almost, no, it was used for disinfection of floors. Yeah. <laughs> and it didn't sell. Uh, so the company, what did it make? It was one of the first marketing instances. They invented the problem of bad breath. Nobody cared. 
in the at the end of uh, the beginning of the century, or the 19th uh, century, nobody cared about it. They started to advertise the press, and so they recycled the glycerin for improving your breathing problems. <laughs> yeah, basically the same formula. <laughs> basically the same formula. Yeah, it's the same product that you use to sterilize floors. You put it in your mouth. Okay, that is okay. But it didn't sell. They they created an issue that wasn't existing yeah. before, and the product ramped up. But I think this is a really dangerous approach because creating a yeah, market no, no, need, I, you need a lot of. I, I was no, no, I was just using it as a stupid example, but. Thinking about it, you don't sell a problem, then probably you have to turn everything upside down and uh, find another way. This was a really expensive way of doing it, but <laughs> anyway. But, okay, yeah, but it worked. I think, yeah, it worked. So maybe what um, you, you can also do, or we can do, or all the mentors can do, is that if you have an idea, you can, like everybody, if you're selling an idea, it depends on how you sell it and how you if there's a store behind it, whatever. And then everybody almost has, yeah, like it or don't like it. In, in like 10 seconds. But then you can do, okay, you can start to think about the idea, and then the managers can tell you, okay, um, the idea, is there a market, isn't there a market, where is the market, are there competitors, are there not competitors, what's the business model? I'm not talking about like a business plan, but the business model. So how are you selling it? How, what, what, what are your ways of selling it? How making out, uh, money out of it? Uh, who are your customers? How, who, uh, what's the user experience? What are you improving actually? So with those, you can like give a feedback. Yeah, okay, I don't like the idea, but it could work. I mean, so that's all. I don't like the yeah. idea, and I don't think it will work with this in this way. Most most of the guys, I think, that are fronting money, business angels, uh, I don't think they like the idea as much. But they think, but they see the potential to make money. I was talking with a business angel uh, a couple of years ago, and he was one one of those. Um, Fronting the, I probably think you saw it if you were, so, uh, the I'm Watch. <laughs> yeah. Okay. He was making some uh, fronting part of the money to have this startup, uh, which is a crappy thing overall. And he he saw it. It was a crappy thing, but I think it can sell. But they got late, and everybody's having it. But okay, this is another story. And instead, he said, you know, but this is just no. I think that I do because, okay, I, I think we could make some money, but I'm not really interested. He was inter instead interested in making uh, machines for uh, retina scan for uh, um, discovering uh, early uh, disease, glaucomas and, and whatever. He said, this is the stuff, this is the company that I can believe in that. But for them, it's just making money and understanding where this money can multiply. Okay, so you have to care about your ideas. The guy that's making them, that's uh, giving the money. So really, they are not good-hearted people who love you. Not always. Yeah. I mean, it depends, but yeah. But mostly, it's the uh, financial. I mean, the financial guys that just want to make money. They are really good at that. They are, and they cannot stand if the idea is worth it or not. When, do, when should these guys go for after money? Pardon? When should these guys go Never. after money? <laughs> I mean, after money meaning, I'm not meaning that uh, the evil will give me money, make me rich, but in order to uh, uh, get their idea further. So what, at what point, when, uh, in, in, for example, now uh, the idea starts to <coughs> develop right about now, has been already a little time, soon it will be presented, the prototype will be built, it will be market tested, and uh, so uh, when is the, in a way, optimum moment for uh, uh, asking uh, for me for the start of it simply when you have a business model, a tested business model that is working, so you have some key performance indicators that depend on I me mean, on the on the startup. A prototype of sorts. No, not the prototype. You sold. You you are you tested your business model. Okay. Your business model is working, and you can say okay, I have key performance indicators, and so you can basically you can say if I put one euro in, I get one and a half or two out or whatever or ten, and um, I can do it on my own, but if I get 100,000, 10 million, whatever, now I can do it a lot faster and I can let someone else participate in that. So that's the ideal 
situation for the startup, I guess, because you have a lot of, of, of uh, contract power as well. Because you can say, yeah, okay, I'm doing this, I'm doing, I, I'm, I'm putting in one euro, I'm taking out 110, 120, 150, two, whatever. Now, if you invest, you will get a share of that. But the That's the bad thing. Man. As he said, the business model must be clear. Yeah. I mean, you can also have uh, investors or, or angels investing in an idea, in a prototype, but uh, realistically not in Italy, not in South Tyrol. Uh, you can get it maybe in, in, in Silicon Valley, maybe in London, maybe in Berlin, maybe also in Munich. Uh, but when, then you will, you will have some, some, you will see an idea and you, you think, well, they're getting two million just for the idea. idea. Yeah, okay, but if you look at the team, you will have like a team of, of guys where they say, oh my God, <laughs> you know, they have done that, this and that and that startup and this successful exit and that and that. So basically the investor in that case is not investing in the idea or whatever because they don't care. They see, okay, those four people, they have, have done this and give them the money and they will make more out of it. So that's the approach. But you, no, none of you and, and neither of us or uh, are, are eligible for something like that. I mean, if, if I was Steve Jobs, I'd, I probably don't think I would have problem finding any money. I mean, I mean even for farting. I mean, <laughs> just saying, I want to do a startup for that. Whoa, yeah. come on, this is money. I mean. But that, that's not the way how you, us, and like 95 or 98 percent. I mean, that could be if you are getting one startup and you're getting it really well, then that could be the case for you, but not now, for sure. She's sleeping. <laughs> what about if I say that, uh, well, I mean, the business model, it's hard. I mean, it's, uh, I, I want to build this uh, uh, social network of new sort. And, uh, well, I, I think that the money will come from advertisement because that, the, the users will not pay anything. But I will have a lot of users. Like, uh, and then I will say, well, you know, that's how Facebook started. So why, why can I? Why, why is not my model any, I mean, my model is equally as, as, as valid as, as their model. I just need to get the users in. <coughs> I want to respond to that because many ideas are often related to some kind of a social network of students or, or whatever network. It's about, uh, for me, it's all about success uh, rate. If you, if you, you can pursue that way. But first you said, I just have to get the users in. Okay, good luck with that. <laughs> but um, also after that, even if you get a lot of users, even if you get to use them, your service, whatever, if you haven't thought about the business model, um, something more concrete, it's really difficult to, to then find someone to, to invest in it. And it's just about the possibility of success rate. So if you're going this, this way, you know that maybe you have like 0.1 to 1% of success rate for this business model because you can't do actively anything to improve it because you can't if you on the other side if you have like maybe a, another approach another business model and you are selling something or you're selling b2b or b2c or whatever then you can actually do about something about it. you can go to a customer to sell him to try to find another way to get some money in but basically if you're just getting in users and every user costs you and brings you maybe a little revenue so losing you're investing on every user. You want to make sure that you really want to do that, or, 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 or thinking about if you're just not wasting your time. I mean, uh, don't make any mistakes. Uh, Facebook uh, has been losing money until a couple of years ago, and uh, and I'm still not sure that uh, the business model is viable. This was my question. It seems that a lot of startups are not profit profitable, they just lose money, so they have a lot of revenues, maybe but even a lot of scope because they just reinvest. And uh, how important is the profit, actually, I can understand. It seems that every startup, it's not profitable. We will be, we will be, and after that, they get uh, they get uh, merged with some other big company, and maybe they will become profitable after that. But uh, when it's on the startup phase, they just don't, don't get profit. Well, that's... Yeah, it depends. It depends the sector you're in. If you're doing something really disruptive, Maybe there isn't a business model yet, or you. And then, on the other hand, you have like a, a, a niche of startups. They are doing it for investors. They're doing it just for the purpose of like building assets, selling them, and have an IPO. So Groupon is a perfect example for me. And Groupon was really going huge and selling 
<laughs> nothing there. <laughs> like, yeah. um, so, so uh, realistically, I would, uh, my advice is just don't care about it. I mean, it's not your league, it's not your business. You you won't uh, enter this kind of business for Second question on the on the same way. Okay, I'm I'm having a startup. I'm having the revenues and I'm having the cost. So I have to decide if I will keep this a, a part of these revenues, a part of my margin in profit, or if I have to reinvest it. How can I decide this? Maybe yeah, but basically as a startup, you won't have any profit in the in the beginnings. I mean, real profit, huge profit. So. It's, normally, it's not a question about reinvesting it or having profits. No, it, it can take you three, four years. I mean, that's not the problem. But it must be demonstrated that these three, four years, you're making a break-even, and you can clearly demonstrate this break-even is coming and, and not. Well, if we have, if we get the customer, it's not. So it, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. I mean. Uh, if it's in the first year, I mean, you're you're losing money in the first year, definitely. Otherwise, you're not doing anything. If you're not getting into debt or uh, whatever, yeah. I mean, you're, you're not doing your stuff. I mean, a startup is completely different from a normal running business, from the logic for me. So, in a running business, then you uh, think about profitability, profitability uh, how is it going, the balance sheet, or whatever. In a startup, what really counts, the only measure in, in the whole accountability is cash flow. So if you have cash flow, you're alive. If you don't, you're dead. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's really all about that. And then if you have that and keep on going, and your stuff is working, your business model is working, you're getting feedback and whatever, that will go automatically. I mean, if you have a working business model and it, go, it, it works, then you're making money automatically. But the difficult part is to, go, to get there, and to get there, you need cash flow. That's the most important thing. You said, uh, what's out there, are there available from when they have really just the idea till they can get the first investment? Do you have any Not spending money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a very good advice. For example, some of them, they want to have ideas, they want to develop quick prototypes. They don't have money to hire developers. How can they do this case? I would say that they like in 99% you don't need to hire developers to to test your idea, but to do whatever you want. Uh, basically, if you're not doing something really complex or algorithms or I don't know, then for you which need... you probably already have uh, yes. the guys that's making it because that... it comes into your mind yeah. or whatever. So it's maybe, yeah. maybe we should do like a, a, a real example. It's better. Like each of you or some of your ideas, and I can tell you, yeah, okay, you need this time to do it. You, could, you can do it that way, and you need developers, external developers, or not. Just. I think some of them already have this problem or not. Yeah, so. Yeah. Right. <laughs> told me what, what, are you, what are you doing? What is your idea? The idea was to import a service that is already running in the US and in Germany, which is about car renting. It's not car sharing, but instead of sharing the ride, you actually rent your car to another private. That was not possible, however, because of the law in Italy, but now things are changing, so it seems like there is an opening for doing that. And I went to a company in Verona that actually built an internet platform, and I asked them how much would it cost to build a platform to, to make this, to realize that, and they told me that that would be 15,000 euro. But then I, I went to a friend of mine who is working here and he's Indian and, he, and I'm outsourcing it uh, now and the same platform would be around 600. Oh, no. well, but we are still talking about it. Well, but 600 is manageable. Yes. Yeah, but maybe 600 is too much, still too much. I mean, it depends. So what, uh, what, what are you trying to do with the platform? Well, basically, the platform is to get in touch uh, supply and demand. Okay, so who, who are your customers, really? People who have a car, but they don't have a really high income, and okay. people who don't have a car, but may actually need it for some time. Just okay. For saying so I basically, I'm renting your car. Yes. Okay. So I would invest the money on legal, not on the platform. Well, yeah, but uh, I, I'm... I have some friends who are studying low or are almost done and I can ask them without spending money. That's okay. That's nice.
that's okay. But first, I would have like the first thing you can do is like uh, build a Facebook group or fan page or whatever and try to find people interested in that. So maybe find really is there a need for it? I mean, um, which kind of number do you think would be needed for something like that? Uh, I can't really tell you. Probably ten is too. <laughs> it's not enough. I mean, but it, you will see if you work on it, then you can see is there people uh, interested in it? Uh, are people willing to pay? Would they be willing to pay? I mean, you have a lot of competitors in this area in this section. You have like car sharing, you have like Uber or Uber, uh, and you have a lot of other other um, uh, stuff going around like. Caching, I need to go to Munich or to Vienna and sharing a ride and whatever. So it's kind of similar. Those are similar customers because everybody, like, uh, probably every guy using a platform for going, uh, taking a ride from here to Munich with someone else or taking from here to wherever or somewhere else could be one of your potential customers because they, it means they don't have a car. They, they are already used to the business model, the normal one, but now they use it for another, um, another kind of site. You know, I'm not going with someone else, but I'm renting his car. So it's kind of similar concept. So those are your first customers. Just go to carsharing.it or those, I don't know. Uh, find some customers. They always write and, and, and find, try to get in contact with them and ask them if they would be interested about it, if they would pay for it. And then you get some real feedback, even before you start a platform or whatever. So then you can still, like, building the marketplace. In, in like a chat style, a group style, so someone is simply posting an announcement, even on a Facebook group. And you could be running like up to 50 or 100 people, I'm, I'm pretty sure, just posting there, yeah, I would need a car tomorrow to go there, who can help me out? And then you will see someone else writing, yeah, I can rent you mine or whatever, and you maybe uh, offer them the legal basis. To it. And then, after that, it's working, you build a real platform on the marketplace and so on. Have you talked to anybody that, uh, so that we are in Italy and uh, that we, have you have you have you thought about the fact that we are in Italy? We like to have our own car, and usually, I mean, if I have, I don't have a car, I don't have a car. Uh, if I had my car, <laughs> yeah, okay, that's right. Also, but, okay. <laughs> I have a motorcycle, but okay, okay. 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 just move around with that and uh, a train. Um, that people are not so much, not a lot of people are much willing to give to strangers their cars. In my case, no, ever, no way ever I will ever give my car to someone that I don't know. Even to someone that I know, really. Yeah. Yeah. I so that, that's the first idea we, we found. Huh? This is a killer idea I already found. Uh, yeah, I need to test it somehow. Yeah, that, okay. that's one of the most Just the first thing that comes to my mind. Yeah. So it doesn't mean that it's not, it cannot be proved to be successful. And in my case, I say, well, probably, probably it's going to change. And a lot of people say, well, that's the car they're giving me money. Okay, but I know how people drive in Italy and <laughs> I'm not comfortable yeah. about giving my car. To the difference is a problem, right? Yeah, now. yeah, definitely. Because there are some companies who offer a daily insurance, but the car has to be matriculated in a particular way. Yeah. Sure. But, but as he, he said, the main problem is mostly legal, I guess. Yeah. But not also, also, he said, the legal point of view, which probably is the, the worst thing, I said the cultural point of view. For example. So forget the platform, do the test, then come yeah. back with the data, and then you know whether you ever want to develop the platform. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So or well, think about like 20 people who have a car who could possibly rent it and 20 people who could possibly use the service and bring them together. But again, then again, not your parents. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Not your friends, not your parents. <laughs> okay. Fellow students, I mean fellow students. Yeah, okay. We can test this year who has a car here. Who of this would want to rent it to somebody? To him. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to rent your car to this guy? Oh, I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> of course, if you want to. Well, the money is here, but maybe we are not the right people. Yeah. 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 That's what I mean. You just have to find people who are willing to pay. Yeah, I, it was um, in South Europe some months ago that started a cooperation with 
car sharing. Mm -hmm. I can't remember the name, but it was... Ah, well, don't be that. No, blah, blah. Yeah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you actually can do carpooling. But I believe that the underlying concept is a bit different. Yeah. Okay. Oh, exactly. I mean, let's try to find. We are here for that. Yeah. Okay. Now you turn the other way around. The pencil, the, the one. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. And then, I mean, I think this is a you know, good stage now. You enough feedback absorb, go find the data, and come back and with the. Uh, I, mean, I mean, you can also find that by turning this case clockwise, it was wrong from the beginning. But everybody does it because it's expected to be done so. But anti-clockwise was better. So let's try it. You know. But still, it's only an idea, so no problem. Uh, I think that blah blah car is uh, yeah, it's about car sharing. So it's the idea of going somewhere, saving some money. I think that what I wanted to do was based on the fact I have a car, I'm going to stay home this Sunday, but I can still make some money by renting the car to someone else. So it's not about the one who actually used the car, it's about the one who rents it. Yeah, just, just try to prove it. Okay, yeah. But still there is a trust issue, the insurance issue, the... So we have a lot of problems, don't worry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's part of the problem. Yeah. Yeah. Things that you know, things that you don't know yet that will be your problems are equally interesting. Maybe yeah. you can... You can uh, Adapt it to a no, those are not time. Time. You don't have feedback yet. No, 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 no. I know that uh, the point was maybe it's not a standing alone uh, business, but maybe you can uh, try to think about yeah, car but... kind of renting a company that already exists. So maybe you have two different targets the people that can rent a car for uh, 200 euros per day, and maybe the student that need a car for one day. So through the car renting, maybe you can just. I don't know. That's, that's, that's the case, but basically before you are laughing yeah, yeah. that. Yeah. Because what we do a lot, and what I uh, do still a lot, is that we like people to try and change without any real feedback. That's the worst thing you can do. So you, you keep, uh, I said event developed deliver, and you keep in that event developed loop. Like, ah, you had this idea, develop it. Oh no, I could change it. Okay. Uh, and you keep moving just this way. And, that's not good. <laughs> so, any other idea? Good feedback is good, bad feedback is also good, no feedback is the worst. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think the bad advice is very important. <laughs> so we always have to have a brain with us. If somebody's giving us bad advice, because those people exist, not us, but some other people, we can know. actually give. Uh, uh, that's why always uh, the entrepreneur, him or herself, is responsible for any action. So if, even if somebody's giving advice, always have to, you know, uh, uh, think carefully how to take this advice. Keep an open mind, but yeah. be skeptical. Sure. I mean, it's, it's a bit up. I mean, it's, it's in the end, it's your life, it's your business, it's your ideas. So as I said before, uh, don't take any any one of face value. Everybody has, has an idea. I mean, some days uh, I know that teams are forming, so. Uh, here, here we heard one idea, and uh, but uh, <coughs> uh, yeah. I think you wanted to get some feedback um, on the idea, and uh, so how is that before? Uh, not yet. <laughs> Why not yet? <gasps> so what, what, what we, what we were asking before, what is, what is your problem? Where can we help you? I mean, on the, on the idea selling craft. No, no my first um, thought is, should I uh, collaborate with Elfaha, or should I make it on my own? Should I approach them or not, because they have uh, all the data, all the resources, they are already, are already in contact with the artisans, that they also see the problem, they know that they have to do that, mm -hmm. so should I... That's a really good question. No clear answer. Yeah, yeah. It, it, the answer well, unless, it depends. But unless you have an improvement, again, as we said before on the idea, you think okay. there is an improvement, an improvement you can make, then you can start, you can think about starting your own. Otherwise, you can probably, it's better if you, if you work with that. And then still there are ideas and make it better. I would, I would try to, what I would say uh, for you, it would be probably better to 
to try to find a collaboration with them. Mm -hmm. But uh, what is very important, you have to make clear rules from the beginning. Mm -hmm. So you have to know where would you end up in that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, because otherwise there's obviously the risk that they're just spotting you or using you, mm -hmm. using you for it. Uh, if you can find an agreement where you say, okay, let's do this thing together, and this is a startup within your uh, within your situation, then I would say it's the perfect uh, perfect it's a perfect one for you because you can do a startup. You have some you stand on the shoulder of giants, like you say, you know. Mm -hmm. So you have like a backup, you have a saving line, and you can just try it out. And if it goes well, it goes well because maybe you have done a deal with them that you in some kind. And if it doesn't go well, you failed, but you did your startup and you did it with with, with a already a good uh, starting potential. I mean, I'm really against inventing the wheel again and the hot water again and whatever. So if you have, and if they are already moving to it, then probably or maybe it could be a good idea to move together with them because otherwise, if, like if you would be a successful entrepreneur and have, you have done it several times or whatever, then you say, okay, the big guys are moving in this direction. Okay, the market is there. Very interesting. So I can do it faster, quicker, better, and can see the market. If you're doing it the first time, you don't have money, you don't have experience, you don't have. It's gonna be a hard time. I mean, it's not that you you know maybe you you you're successful, but maybe you can. It, it would be smarter to to do it uh, together. But just make sure to find a good uh, economic um, agreement at the beginning. Don't be afraid about dreaming and thinking big. I mean, that's really that should be really nice. But also, don't think that uh, in a month, uh, in a year, you'll be in Silicon Valley. But uh, listen with me. Uh, this is not this is not bad. I mean, uh, you can be really good at something that you can only you make, and. Uh, uh, it's not probably going to sell into millions, but that's good. It probably may, it can make you a decent living. It can it can make you free. So probably maybe you have just work one hour a day, and the rest of the day you can do whatever you want. I mean, this is for me could be really a good measure of success. Really, you know, even not having millions in the bank or, or whatever, but just being able to do whatever you want. I think this is. Could be my measure of success. One of the measures of success. Having hundred thousand in the bank would be a good start. <laughs> <laughs> okay. For example, I, I I suggested to read a book which is kind of interesting. It's called the One Hundred Dollars Startup. Okay. Yeah, that's so you mean. Uh, I think also in the in the what we have been saying, like get things done, do stuff. That's the perfect thing. I mean, you have a way, you have yeah. a path. Just yeah. do it. You can all, all, all um, you can still, uh, you can um, every always people to do another uh, thing or something else in a couple of points yeah. a year, whatever. Maybe you're not a workaholic. I mean, probably you just also like to be goofing around, being lazy. And if you can find something that who does like, <laughs> <laughs> well, I know people that are workaholics. So anyway, they they just need to do all the they do stuff all the day. So. If you just find something that can make you a living, a decent living, uh, and then have you a lot of free time to do whatever you want, to travel, to go around, to probably other stuff, but not in a chain, I mean, uh, where is it? That's, that could be nice also. Yeah, I, I had uh, one idea about uh, when I was still doing projects for my uh, for design. Uh, it was a uh, Concept about a platform that uh, work together with uh, first aid companies and design students or upcoming designers. And um, the platform was about uh, combining the interests of, of those two groups uh, by um, the designers or design students would donate uh, their graphical works uh, to. Uh, Onto this platform, where um, the first aid companies would um, be able to to use them for their commercials or so on, or basically marketing. And um, I well, the, what I um, gained as feedback from the professors was quite positive back then. 
and um, I well I pretty much created the website because it was a graphic project and so on and some posters as well. Um, the only thing I'm not sure about is how far I should take this concept or what should I do with it because I don't really yeah I don't I don't know how to pr approach this niche because it's it's very uh, for me I think it's very difficult to. Uh, to to start a thing like that where um, maybe there won't be any money involved because for me as a developer I'm going to work uh, with a, a first aid company who need the money for something else and on the other side I'm working with design students who okay will donate the work I could start for example a workshop here and so on but for me it's uh, the problem what will I get out of this do you have any advice? <laughs> it is, it is, the question is a business model. Or yes. Waste the money. <laughs> yes. <laughs> basic question. I mean, you could do it for still and profit, or I don't know. But it's not necessary that any business model is good or it makes yeah. money. I mean, yeah. Uh, but I, I do not know exactly your your case, but uh, don't be afraid to admit it to yourself. If it is, it, it can be. I mean, it's nothing wrong. I mean, uh, as we said before. It can be a mistake, and it can be a, a very. Uh, some of the mistakes that you make can be the best things that happen in your life because it makes you get to, as he said, a very valuable. Uh, I, lesson. But yeah. I think what you need to have is an idea for this. At least, I mean, you have to sit down and find at least. You, you should find like ten or fifteen or twenty different business models and say this one not, not this one not, this one not, this one not. This one not. So at the end you have one, at least one you're trying to do that. So if it fails, it's okay. I mean, mm -hmm. but if you're starting without proving any concept of a business model or whatever, uh, maybe for me, I mean, it's, it's something you can do in your free time, in your part time. If you have another something, then you do one hour in the evening, two hours in the evening, okay? And then maybe from that you get a lot of exposure and then you get a job or you get something else. Yeah, so that's, 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 oh, that's another way you run, but then make sure not to invest too much time in it. Maybe the, the model that you can make, you are good in making models of things that are not making really any money, but there is a need maybe for that. I mean, you can make NGOs work together. Right? I mean, you can probably, this is one of your models, you can make these things that they're not making money work together for some reason or another. I mean, I'm just saying. And, and the other thing is, the second thing is platform. Um, I, so basically, I have like the three things I heard now are all platforms. Platforms are nice and okay, but platforms are basically the most difficult thing to do. Because you have a platform, a platform always means you have two, at least two different kinds. You have a customer and you have a, a, a selling part, and then you have to bring them together and do the third part of it. So it's not like you are selling to a customer, but it's like someone else is selling to the customer and you in the middle, and providing value for that and gaining money out of that. It's really complex, it's very difficult, and uh, the whole thing doesn't work if you don't have one. Maybe you have a lot of customers, but you don't have nobody selling, or vice versa. That's a really huge problem. And uh, that's also why I would suggest to go to El Fahar, because you can, could say to them, okay, you know, we do this together, you focus on the providing part and on the hand and they can, and, and I focus on bringing in the customers. That's perfect. You find something uh, good and the same problem you will have with, with your model or also with, the, with the car sharing model. So my advice is on, on all this stuff, maybe take a, a step back and, and see if there's a model you can prove before you do the platform, you can prove for one of the two targets. So you can focus on that one and build a customer base uh, on, on one side. Here we have a question. Yeah. Do you know what strategies, how to gain and earn money as a third person? Someone who makes platforms. Uh, sorry, repeat. Um, do you know various um, strategies yeah. to gain and earn money and being that situation in the third person who makes platforms? Did you explain right? Like now? examples? Yeah. yeah, eBay would be an example for that. No, yeah. But how do you know strategies how to get money, uh, to earn money? The best thing. Yeah, you normally you charge either a, a, a fee, a flat fee, like you have. Every month, or every year, you pay that. That would be like for um, classified 
You know, you have your classified, you, you show your hotel, you're showing your, your stuff on the internet, and other times you have customers, buyers, and you're paying for being for visibility, example. Or you're selling stuff, and people are selling stuff one to another, eBay, and you get something out of it. Or you're providing a service, PayPal, uh, for buying, and then you get percentage out of it. Or you're matching people, like, uh, I don't know, all the dating platforms. You're matching uh, people with the platform for so matching them. And fees and you charge them either for success rate or for a flat fee. Or, uh, there are a lot of models, basically. But the problem in platforms is not the model. They're quite easy. I mean, the, you charge uh, each other. But the problem is to get both. I think they charge quite models. a lot. I think Booking.com uh, charges 20%. Mm -hmm. Yeah, booking charges quite a lot, yes. But I mean, that's, that's on the that's cheaper side. There are hotels.com that even charges even more uh, for the, so if somebody makes the booking but via this. I can, I can make you a very good example of this one. Um, you know HRS? Uh, HRS.de is uh, like a hotel reservation service. It's the biggest in, in Germany. Uh, so booking basically is the biggest in the whole world, more or less, except in Germany. In Germany, HRS is market leader. They uh, are, have 60, 70% market share in Germany, which is really impressive. And they are making like 170 million, million turnover and 40 million uh, profit, so making good money. And um, they also have the platform problem basically because you have like uh, people who want to go either for business trips or for personal holidays, and then they have the hotels or whatever. So what they did and what and why they are so strong in keeping uh, keeping their um, their assets is that they uh, have built another business model behind it, which is B2B. Uh, business business. So they have uh, developed a platform uh, integration for all the big German companies. So Volkswagen, Deutsche Bank, uh, whatever, uh, anybody name them. And all those big companies like Volkswagen, I think, have 110,000 uh, people working for them. They have internal offices for booking because they need to travel, fly, to book, whatever. And RS provides them a system integration so they can book directly from there all the stuff for all the employees. So the train, the, the, the aircraft, the, the, the hotel, whatever. So that's a very competitive advantage and that's why the others are not getting in. So maybe sometimes you also have to think around or think shift shift perspective or and that's also something like the B2B you can address directly because like maybe the platform is not working because you have not enough people going there and then you have not enough hotels, whatever. You think, okay, hotels, I can get them, I can just get to them and then I give them good rates. In the beginning, I get in a lot a lot quickly. And then on the other, other side, maybe business to business, I just can get one contract with one big company and I'm already started, I'm working, and then I can build it up. So that's my advice if you're thinking platform, First of all, always think how can I do business with one of the two sides. <coughs> and we're reaching the end of this session. Um, well, one last question. Okay. Um, for example, uh, okay, you you build a website for something. It's not important for for what, but how do you spread the voice? Uh, how you how you become a brand? Ooh, that's the one million dollar question. I mean, uh, in, way, in, the, in which direction you need to... It depends on, the, on what you offer. What are your services? You can't, I mean, it, uh, you can have a website and you don't need any marketing at all because you're going B2B. I don't know. Mm -hmm. You can have another website which you promote. You can do a lot of by direct marketing, I don't know, social media marketing, Facebook, Twitter, mm -hmm. LinkedIn, that stuff. Uh, you can also do, obviously, the other, all the other kinds of marketing normal marketing mix, whatever, but that's normally at a later stage because it costs you a lot of money. And there you need a model where you know, okay, I'm spending one and I'm getting 150 in, because otherwise you're just burning money. And that's not funny. <laughs> uh, so there's not one single answer. This depends completely on... on, on, on what are you selling? What are you selling, selling to? What is the business model? I mean... It's yeah, like maybe on their case when they are doing amplifiers, you can find your customer base in niche forums yeah. worldwide. You, you find there, there are, I, I guess, there are people really passionate about details and stuff and whatever. You can just go to the forums, write them. You can go to platforms in, maybe you find a group in Facebook talking about it or on LinkedIn. 
and you can find your customers and address them directly. That's the easiest way you can do. Just don't be afraid to ask. That's that's normally the problem. I have a last question for you. How do you find your competitive advantage in amplifier uh, manufacturing? Because I'm playing something and I know that there are a lot of multinational companies which are actually, yeah, the market is... If I knew that, I would be uh, successful, really. I mean, it would let ah, okay. them I, know. <laughs> I mean, as far as I know, the product that I made, uh, that I make, uh, are not... I mean, uh, I have to say, we have compared it to stuff that costs 10, uh, 100 times more. And it's uh, the price. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the price you're at my check. The no, no, right no, quality and the right price. An example, okay. okay. Some quality, and it, is, uh, uh, it consumes uh, much less than the others. I mean, I can play it on the ecological side, on the quality side. I mean, it was different. Uh, again, uh, it could be done better, it could sell better, definitely, but it's a very tricky. I know this is a completely tricky issue. And, uh, in Italy and worldwide, uh, it's a very uh, fucked up market. <laughs> <laughs> because then you realize that the big companies, the distributing companies, are paying money to keep you out of the market. And that's, uh, that's what I got uh, two weeks ago. I got uh, uh, a shop that told me so. so. They just pay money to keep you out. So there is no, I don't have the recipe for that, nope. It's just a, a thing that I do because I really like it. That's it. I can hope that, okay, I can carve, you know, my place in a niche, but I, I'm definitely not sure I'll be able to do so. As far as it keeps me going and I like it, I will do it. When I get tired, I'll probably do something else. We will find the right, the right way. Probably, maybe. I hope so. I still think so. I didn't come. I didn't have friends at the university that uh, with whom I made uh, any any work. In my case, all the good connection uh, came afterwards with starting to work. And, uh, I think it's good because now I see most of the potential at the university, and it's nice to think that also afterward when you come. Uh, meet, uh, meet. I mean, uh, meet people. Yeah. Be sociable, meet people. Mm -hmm. If you want to overcome this, that's the only thing that Don't I can be tell. Shy. Don't be shy, yeah. Even, even if you're shy, fake it. Don't be shy. You see that in a... No, no, it's really... I used to also to be shy. I used to hate to talk in public and whatever. You just start to fake it if you don't know any other things. And in, in a while, you, you won't be shy anymore. And, I mean... I'm not, I do not know if it's your case, but or maybe some, some, someone else doesn't like to be in here in, uh, on the stage and talk with uh, tens, hundreds of thousands of people, so it, it can be okay, but I mean, but it's, uh, don't, don't be afraid about it, I mean, it is really the least. Just meet people and engage with people and you see that whether it's at the university or at work, other place you find uh, other people to work with if you want to. This is just if you want. To. Uh, one last question. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the third, the last question. Okay. Come on. Okay. Um, about the amplifier. I mean, I'm imagining that it took you a long time to develop this product. 
when did you know was the, the, the right time to actually start the company and start production? Ex uh, excellent question. Uh, we made uh, all of the, the things that you have saw that on, uh, on the page, this was the, the, the third that we made. I made the first one for my girlfriend, basically. And I, no, I made the first one just to try to see if it works. I improved it with the second one because my girlfriend needed it. Then the third and fourth one, almost I think I got it right, this version. Uh, you put it out. Uh, you just arrive at the point where you put it out, but the important thing is then uh, stop working at it. If you want to work at it, improve it and sell it as an improvement. I know I, I'm talking this because it, 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 it's, uh, this is very typical of the audio uh, environment. I've, I've been working with guys who make loudspeakers, you know. Two of them are really terrific uh, uh, artisans. Wonderful stuff. But they never, never, never know when to stop. They make, they make the speaker and said, wow, this is cool. After a month, they call you, yeah, you know, I made an improvement. <laughs> yeah, I made another improvement. And this is the worst part because uh, you can't sell these things. Because you go, you go to the shop and the guy listens to it. This is not like before. Yeah, because I made an improvement. He said, come on, how can I sell these things if it's never finished? If you always started to improve it. If you want to improve it, change the name. Change anything else. It was, you know, something like that. Then okay, make it this. Change the form. Change whatever you want. Something else. But once you close it, you close it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah that means. Uh, and never, if okay, unless there are some structural failures into it. <laughs> okay. And then you have already to work about if you if you're satisfied, money satisfied something, okay, to go improve it. But this is another project. Okay, so this is really the last question. But you you will have time in the future to ask these two mentors. Even they are mentioning other teams, there's no problem, you send them questions. So okay, so we'll see you tomorrow at eight thirty to meet the other three mentors, okay? Okay. Then. Thanks for you for coming. Sure. I have just five minutes to have.